Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Monotui, coach of the Tampa Bay Luxways, and today I'm bringing you guys our first match for the Pokemon Draft World Cup uh, versus Jack, aka Don Fanatic, coach of the Norwich Giddy. His YouTube links will be down in the description below. If you don't know what is going on here, definitely check out the little teaser video that went up yesterday. Basically, Raikwin hosted a Pokemon Draft World Cup. We each drafted seven Mons with the PPL price system, but we ended up having like less money. It wasn't a free draft, we ended up having a budgeted draft and we had less money to draft 7 months. I think it was like $80 million or whatever. So, uh, that was a lot of fun. And this is going to be our first match in that little tournament thingy, round robin type thing. Whoever wins or does good enough for this moves on to the next segment, which is really cool. Uh, but anyway, for a quick rundown of our team, as you can see we have the 6 here, Mega Heracross, Gengar, Clefable, Gliscor, Seismitoad, Houndoom, and then not seen on uh, the field currently is a Cloyster that I ended up drafting. I'm not going to do in-depth team builders for this, but I will go over the team that I brought for Jack. So, this team consists of sub-3 attacks, Adamant, Mega Heracross, that puts in a ton of work on his team. As you can see, he has no good switch into it whatsoever. Uh, Life Orb Gengar with actually Sucker Punch, so that I can possibly pick off the Mega Beedrill if he's weakened enough. Standard Spread, uh, con uh, not Conmai, but Standard Spread Clefable with Moonblast Flamethrower, uh, Soft Boiled, and then I think... Calm mind? Not Calm Mind. Maybe Calm Mind. I think it was Calm Mind, yeah. I had Calm Mind over T-Wave because he had the Steelix to switch into it every time and I wanted Flamethrower. Uh, we have Specially Defensive Glacegore. We have a Specially Defensive Stealth Rocking Seismitoad. And then we have a Life Orb Houndoom with Pursuit. So let's get right into it. He is going to lead with his Beedrill. I'm going to lead with my Seismitoad. I'm fully okay with this. I believe I just go right for my uh, Stealth Rock as I do, as he's actually going to set up a layer of Toxic Spikes, which I thought was interesting to have. Uh, definitely kind of ballsy for him to stay in, because I could have had Earthquake, but makes sense for him. Uh, there, I predict him to go for the U-turn, so I'm just going to go, not really a prediction, but I just predict him to do whatever, and I go for the Earthquake. It was a good neutral play. And here, uh, Seismato did its job, so I'm just going to go for a knockoff on this Vaporeon, as he is going to throw up the Wish, um, which is totally fine, but I cannot do a lot of damage to this thing, so I'm just going to go out into my Clefable, which should be able to beat this thing 1v1. If he actually reveals the Acid Armor, which is kind of scary, but I am actually carrying... That's right, I'm carrying Toxic on this Clefable, not anything else, and I freaking miss, which is awesome. So I think uh, my Clefable set was Moonblast, Flamethrower, Toxic, and Soft Boiled, because that dealt with this team really, really well. And that Toxic miss is huge, and you're going to see that come into play later. Here, I'm going to get sent out in my Mega Heracross, which normally would be okay, but because he's got plus 2 defense, I cannot knock him out. I can't do enough damage to him, so I'm going to go back out in my Clefable, as he does throw up another Wish. And on this turn, I believe I go for another Toxic, trying to hit the Vaporeon as he ends up sending his, in his Steelix on this turn. So again, that Toxic earlier on would have been really nice on the Vaporeon, because it did not have Heal Bell. Uh, so here, I'm going to make the switch out into my Gliscor as he sets up his Stealth Rock. And at this point, I can start uh, hitting this thing with Earthquake, start trying to wear it down. Even though I'm specially defensive, I can tank the Ice Fang, as you're going to see here. I does very little damage. I'm able to eat that up. Uh, and here, I'm not sure if I made the... No, I just go for another Earthquake, weakening this Steelix down, which is really, really nice for my Clefable to possibly clean up late game, because it is looking very threatening for this team. i got to get rid of the Steelix as well as the Mega Beedrill, but... Doing that, he's going to send out his um, his Tangrowth as I go for the Roost, getting myself back to full amount of HP. And what I can do now is go for the Toxic on this thing to also whittle this thing down. Uh, but as you can see, he is going to go for the Leech Seed. Not that big a deal because I can still <coughs> wall this thing pretty comfortably. I'm still getting myself back to full health. He's going to get worn down more than I am. So here I'm going to go for the Taunt, stopping him from going for any type of attack. As he's actually going to reveal the Hidden Power Ice, which I was not expecting. Definitely good prep on his part, though. You know, that's going to be very annoying for me to deal with. And now on this turn, I'm going to go for the Roost because I take HP Ice neutrally, or uh, one times effective, but he's going to go for the Giga Drain, which is going to hit me super effectively because I lose my, um, my, what's it called, my Flying Typing. So this is not a battle I feel like playing, so I'm going to switch out into my Heracross here as he is actually going to pull a switch out into his Mew, which is a little unfortunate. I would have very much preferred he did not do that. But it is what it is. I'm going to switch out, fearing the psychic type attack, out into my Houndoom. And as you're going to see here, that is exactly what he decides to go for. He did not want to mess around with that threat. Uh, and here, what he's going to do is actually go for the Roost as I go for the Pursuit, trying to knock him out. <coughs> or trying to catch him switching out, which is obviously not going to happen. And now, expecting him to go for another Roost, I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse, which will be able to do a ton of damage to him. As you can see here, it does an absolute ton. And now he is in range of the Pursuit again, and I don't think he's going to switch out. So I'm just going to go for the Sucker Punch, 
to knock out his Mew, which is really nice. I think he was Culverberry, so the Unnerve ended up really helping out, but uh, we were able to take down the Mew, which was one of the bigger threats to my team, so I'm really happy about that. Here, I'm going to send out Seismitoad as he sends out my his uh, Beedrill. This is the most useless thing on my team at this point, so I'm just going to let him die to the U-turn. Again, no reason to keep it in. I knew he was going for U-turn anyway. I didn't want him to gain initiative, so he's going to go out into his Raikou, and at this point, I see this as a pretty good opportunity to go back out into my Clefable. He's going to go for the Volt Switch. Uh, he's going to reveal to be Life Orb, which is nice. And I believe at this turn, I just go for the Moon Blast. Is that what I do? Yes, I just go right for the Moon Blast. And then I think on the following turn, I click Flamethrower. Maybe. Do I? No, I might not have had Flamethrower on this thing. Or I didn't think it would kill at that point. But anyway, expecting him to not go for the Ice Fang, I'm going to switch on to my Glyscore as he makes a very good play. And that's that's pretty big because Glyscore could have beaten the rest of his team. So that was a very good play on his part. I probably should have just sacked Michael Fable to get a free switch into something like Heracross. But good play on his part going for the Ice Fang there. I'm going to make another kind of not great play here as I'm going to Mega Evolve with my Heracross and then go for sub instead of just attacking as he's just going to stay in and break my sub with the Heavy Slam. Basically I was thinking, okay, he might want to save this thing because it's the only thing really beating my Clefable other than the Mega Beedrill, but unfortunately that is not the case, but it doesn't really end up costing me too much. Like anything could have came in afterwards and revenged me anyway. Uh, so here, he's going to send in his Beedrill. I have absolutely no reason to keep my Mega Heracross around, so I'm just going to let it die to the U-turn. And as bad as this is looking right now, it actually is winnable. My Gengar can win. Because he's Life Orb, this Raikou dies to Sludge Wave, uh, Tangrowth dies to Sludge Wave, and Beedrill dies to Sucker Punch. So all I have to do is weaken the Vaporeon a little bit, which would have been much easier if I had hit the Toxic earlier on, and then I can win with my Gengar. So he's going to go for the Volt Switch here. Totally fine, he is definitely in range of the Sludge Wave, like I said earlier, and he's going to go right out into his Beedrill as I go for the Soft Boiled. Um, and at this point, I can hard switch in my Gengar. It's not going to appreciate the hit, but it can tank the hit because it is four times resisted. Uh, though again, it is not going to appreciate it because I'm very frail in Jesus Christ. And here, I make another mistake. I should know that the only way I could win right now is if I'm... Or he's thinking, okay, he's probably going to be Scarfed, so I should switch out because he's going to outspeed me and kill me. What I should have done is gone for the Sludge Wave here, trying to pick off or to a KO the Vaporeon. Instead, I'm going to go right for the Sucker Punch, which would have been really cool if I pulled off, but it was just too early to do. And even though it was kind of a 50-50 whether or not I was Scarfed or not, it was still just not the right play. But this point in the match right here is where the Toxic would have been absolutely huge because he would be willed down. I'm going to go for the Moon Blast here because I thought he might go out in a Beedrill, not letting me to Toxic, but Toxic, but instead he just roars me out into my Gengar, and I can't knock him out from this range, so I'm going to go back out into my Clefable. I'm going to tank the Scald relatively well, that's fine. And I think on this turn I go for the Toxic, but again, it just would have been super helpful to have this on him earlier because he's going to roar here. He's whittling my Gengar down to the point where now I cannot clean up the rest of his team because Life Orb Recoil will knock me out before I can do anything. So here I'm just going to switch out my Clefable once again as he throws up a Wish. I believe I either Moon Blast or Mo uh, um, Soft Boiled here. I am going to go for the Soft Boiled. Probably should have just gone for the Moon Blast, but it's not that big a deal because I can't win at this point anyway. My Gengar is too whittled. He's going to get the Wish back. Going to bring him to 74%. Uh, and I think on this turn, I'm like, all right, go for Roar. No, nah, he's not going to go for Roar. He had no reason to go for Roar. Uh, so Gengar is going to go down. This Vaporeon is getting whittled, but he can just go out into his Mega Beedrill and win the game. Uh, if I gotten a little bit more damage off on the Mega Beedrill, I would have been able to win with this Clefable. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Going to go for the Moon Blast. Going to get a little bit of damage off. That's cool. Um, but yeah, he's like I said, he's just going to be able to send in his Mega Beedrill and click Poison Jab and knock me out. And that is going to be a loss for Game 1. Uh, I prepped fine. I did not play well and the hacks earlier on in missing the... Um, Missing the uh, the Toxic definitely did not help, but again, this match, th the loss was pretty much my own. Like, I definitely could have played better. Not even necessarily more aggressively, but just played smarter. Like, it was not the most intelligently played game. I definitely could have won this game if I played a little bit better. Uh, that being said, we do have two other games to come after this. If we can win our next two in a row, we will be uh, set to move on to uh, bracket play. But regardless, that was game one. I'm looking forward to show you guys game two, and I will be looking forward to seeing you then. So until then, goodbye.